Hey folks, it's Carrie Oberbrunner and I have with me a very cool kindred spirit. The guy gets my life, my business. I get his life and business. So Jonathan, great to be with you today. Gary, I'm so excited to be here and talk about this important conversation. Yes, and listen, there's a lot of people right now who are watching and will watch that say, my message doesn't matter. In other words, that's the lie from the enemy that they've believed. Because I think it's easier to believe that, that, you know what, I don't matter, my message doesn't matter. Jonathan, I wanna tell people what they're gonna get today in terms of value. I really believe they're gonna get hope they're going to get case studies. They're going to get illustrations of people who, just like them, have uh, maybe not been born with a big platform or all kinds of funds to spend on ads. Um, and they're going to get some some clarity today. So, Jonathan, first of all, tell us the backstory about the book. Why did you put this title, this book, for this time in life? Yes. So this was a kind of a realization about four years ago. And I got started in my online journey as blogger. That's how I got started. Started blogging about career coaching advice. And then after a couple of years, started teaching people about how do you take something you're passionate about and turn it into a successful blog and business online. And I used to have this product called Blogging Your Passion University. Yep. And um, it was something we launched every year for several years. And uh, one particular year, I said on the last day, I'm going to be on the live chat and I just want to answer any questions you have. And yes, it's really me. And I had like about eight different chats going on at once. It was a crazy day. It was like 12 hours of just having conversations with people. Wow. And here was the thing, Carrie, that shocked me. The questions were not about what was in the course. 95% of the questions were, I don't think I could do this. Ooh. I don't think I have what it takes. I don't know if I can add value to people. I don't know if my message matters. And I walked away that day going, people who are not buying my product are not buying it because they don't think it'll work. They're not buying it because they don't think that they have what it takes, Whoa. that their story doesn't matter, that their message doesn't matter. And that was a breakthrough for me. And so I knew I wanted to write a book that was one half self-development in getting our thinking straight. And the second half was on the marketing tools and tactics because you can learn all the stuff. You know this, Gary, you can, you can learn all of the marketing techniques but if you don't fundamentally believe your message matters to people, you're not going to do it. Tanisha, I'm going to ask you to tag uh, Lisa Mosier because we've been having chats about this recently. In fact, this topic came up in my high level mastermind, which is not cheap. And it's a big time commitment of your, your life and your heart. And they even said this, Jonathan, they said, you know what? I feel like I don't have the confidence to, to sell myself. This is how, in my opinion, Jonathan, the, the enemy is winning mm. because you're right. It's not about the bells, the whistles, the three clicks, the lead magnet, the upsell. If you have all that, but you don't have the belief you're going to repel people. Give us some uh, success stories because I'm sure along the way you've met people who said, I didn't think my message matters. Now I've read Jonathan's book or I've applied the framework, the content, and now I'm getting different results. What are, what are some of those people? And by the way, folks, I'm going to give away a free copy of Jonathan's book at the end of this show to the most engaged member. So I wanna hear people ask questions, like it, share it, tag it. Someone needs to hear this today. Give us some case studies, Jonathan. Absolutely, and I'll give you just two off the top of my head. Well, I'll give you three real quick ones. The first one was a couple of years ago, a lady by the name of Linda Cardamas. She was a middle school math teacher. She'd started a blog wanting to help Christian school teachers 
do classroom management better. And yeah. she came to me and said, I've got this blog. I'm trying to help Christian school teachers. I don't know how to monetize this. I don't know what to do. I'm struggling with it. And so we landed on her putting her knowledge into a course called Classroom Management 101. Mm. Well, fast forward, it's you know been, what, six years? And she not only works from home full time, helping Christian school teachers, but she has her husband who had an IT career left his day job to come work for the home business. And they are wow. thriving today. And what's amazing is how many people would think, well, I can't build a business ministering to Christian school teachers that could never pay the bills with that. She is killing it. And that is her niche. Second story is Chad Allen, somebody you and I know. Yes. We first met Chad when he had not made $1 online. He uh, used to work in the publishing industry on the other side as a, a regular employee. But on the side, he had his heart in wanting to help people get their books in the world. Yes. And I remember having a conversation with him at the very beginning. He said, Jonathan, when do I start monetizing my blog? I said, yesterday. We need to get you started. And we came away with this idea of book proposal. That is the thing you know, which then became Book Proposal Academy. Now he's got a membership site. Now he's left his day job to go do this full time. And the third one is somebody you and I both had a lot of influence on, but I met him years ago at the very beginning was Daryl Stinson. Oh, yeah. He just has an amazing story. He's one of our authors. He's yeah. one of our authors. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of your authors. I met him several uh, years ago, and he's he was like, I don't know. I, I, I got the story. I want to do something. I want to help second chance athletes. I don't know what to do. And through the process, I said, get into my mastermind. I want to start helping you. And then I heard he was going to do a book. He jumped in, did a book with you guys. He's got Jack Canfield, who's written endorsements for it. I mean, he's created this platform. He's helping other people. Yes. And this is just, just a couple of stories. And so I want everyone to know that regardless if you're a, a burned out athlete, if you're a burned out corporate employee, or you're a burned out middle school math teacher, there is an opportunity for you. But it starts by believing you have a message. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, it's almost like you can have the best, like, what? here's an analogy because of a pandemic. It's almost like someone who has a cure for someone's illness. I mean, they're, they're, they're dying there. The person has the cure that's going to save the other person. But they say, I just don't know if I should share my cure because maybe it'll fail. Or maybe they'll be upset if I tell them that I have a cure. I mean, is this kind of, it's a weird analogy, but the woman who helps schools, Daryl, who helps uh, second chance athletes, Chad, who helps authors, all of these people have a cure for someone's problem. And they almost let themselves get in the way because they didn't think they mattered. Is, is this true? Absolutely. In fact, I would even add this to what you just said. Uh, as Christians, mm -hmm. we have a stewardship responsibility to share that knowledge, mm -hmm. to share that gift, to share that experience, because we all are part of a bigger story. And God has his own way of bringing people into our paths who need the message we have to share. And it's not about us trying to get the results. It's about us stewarding our gift. A couple of years ago, um, this was probably, gosh, seven, eight years ago, when I was still just, you know, I was doing things online. I was, I was full time, but still trying to figure out how to get to the next level. And my wife wrote something. She's real creative. She took this piece of board and she put chalk paint on it. And then she put it in the chalk markings. Steward your gift. Trust God for the results. And Ooh. that settled me and it allowed me to say, I just need to wake up every day and serve people. And that consistency of continuing to show up and serve people with what I believe is a message I have to share is going to over time produce results, but that's in God's hands. I need to focus on what I can control. 
And so that, um, I would add that to what you just said, but absolutely, we have a responsibility mm -hmm. and a stewardship responsibility to share our message. You ready for your first question? Let's do it. From the crowd. By the way, Joe's watching from, from Michigan. Just got off with him and uh, I mentioned your name. He said, oh, Jonathan, he's amazing. And, and so you have a great reputation out there. Joyce says, sometimes it's not that you think you don't matter, but it's that you don't know how. Have you, have you bumped up against that where some people actually do have confidence, but they don't have competence? Is your book, I think you said it's half that and half the other. Talk about us. Yes. So the first part is in nailing down your message. And uh, Carrie, you did a great job of this in your day job to dream job book, which you mm. know, I think I, I think there's more parts highlighted than not highlighted in that yeah, book. And I was just cool. like, I was like, Carrie and I are just like, I just, I'm like, this is an awesome book. Well, so, and I got to compliment you. I bought your mastermind course and you gave your course, gave me the confidence to lead my first mastermind probably around that time, seven years ago. So notice how Jonathan helped me. I helped him and that's yeah. synergy right there, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the first answer is getting clear on your message. And uh, part two of the book, I talk about a whole section called discovering your message. And I think this is the part that people get unclear on is mm -hmm. like, how do I know what is a powerful message to begin mm -hmm. with? And it comes down to three things, purpose, people, and passion. Oh. And the way that I define purpose is it's, it's not in a thing. It's mm -hmm. not in a title. It's not in a job. It's not in a company. Your purpose is what is inside of you. It's the gift that you've been given. It's that unique ability. That's Again, good. it's that thing that you were born with, the way that you see the world, your uniqueness, your unique worldview. Tapping into that is your purpose. Two, it is uh, people. You can't serve mm -hmm. everybody. So who is the audience that you're going to serve? Get specific. And then finally is passion. Now, the way I like to define passion in the book is it's what problem are you passionate about solving for the next two to five years? Ooh, that see, that's good right there. We got to yeah. talk about that. Can we talk yeah. about that? Because absolutely, I, I feel like there's some authors out there who say, you know, I published the book and I'm bored and now I got to go write another book and they forget that they have to market it. And here's what I tell people a lot of times. I say, do you ever think Bono, gets tired of singing where the streets have no name. I mean, he's been singing it for three, four decades. The point is that like people show up at the concert and if he doesn't sing that song, they feel ripped off. But you're saying you gotta, you gotta plan this thing for two to five years. And I think some people are, you seen that logo where people are inches from the diamonds and then they turn back. Don't you think that people, some of your clients, some of my clients, they're inches from the diamond, but then they say, ah, I'm not getting the results. Yes. Give up too soon. Right. It's the whole idea of like, and I, I liken this to, I give an example of a farmer in the book. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, think about a farmer. If, if a farmer, let's say a brand new farmer, he bought some land. And then the first day he went and tilled that land, he put down his seed he went to bed that night. He was so excited. He was just like, I can't wait. This is just great. I've, this is my dream of being a farmer. And the next morning he wakes up, he runs to the window, pulls open the curtains, looks out and sees nothing. It's the same as it was yesterday. And he throws his hand up and says, see, I knew I was not a good farmer. Ooh, as that's ridiculous big. as that sounds, that's how a lot of us treat our, our business. The thing that we want, our book, we treat it that way. We, we plant in the spring. We even, you know, try to, to till it and take care of it, and weed it during the summer, and we give up before the harvest. Don't allow that to happen. Like, stay with it. That's so good. So I love the fact that, you know, I read a ton of books. I listen to a ton of books. So first of all, what I like about your book is you can get it in multiple versions. You can get it in, in three right now, Kindle, hardcover, 
paperback. I got to ask you, are you doing audio too so, soon? Yes. Ever? We are, already got it scheduled. The challenge has been with uh, COVID actually finding a studio, studio? to go record the, the, the uh, audio book, but it's coming. Who is your publisher, Baker? Baker Books. Yes, I like I like Baker. They did two of mine. You you connected me with Chad, I believe, um, which is awesome and uh, good. So you're gonna get it. You're gonna get a studio there, which is fantastic. But I like about your book that, folks, he just he just did a great little point here, and that is he referenced the book, like. Joyce asked a question and you went right back to the book and said purpose, people, passion. And you you were you were serious. Like part one, this is the whole self-development. Mm -hmm. I love it. So this gets into the mindset and and I love how you equip and arm people so that they're believing them their themselves. Then you come in here and you perfect the whole technique that's awesome and then what is talk to us about part three and part four as well yeah so part three is getting into the actual tactics of today and these are principles these aren't we didn't get into naming things because you know how tools and things change we get into what what are the eternal principles about getting your message out there and there's four that i've been teaching for a few years and it's, it's the four habits that we try to help our students and clients really put their focus into because we are distracted more than ever. And what we need is clarity on the four areas that we need to be spending our time. And so mm -hmm. those are the create, capture, compile, and connect habit. That create habit is about what are you doing to give free value out there so you can attract people to your message. And the things that uh, are the most popular out there are blogging, podcasting, YouTube videos, or live streaming like we're doing right now. Those are some of the more popular ways. But we've got to put our message out there and, and bring and give free value. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to stop there. We want to get them on our list. And that's the capture habit. How do you build that email list so you can nurture the relationship? which then leads to the compile, which is compiling your knowledge and products in your knowledge into products and services. Something you do a great job of well, Carrie, and I know that's something you and I both love to do is build multiple income streams around yes. one book. And then finally, number the last one, number four is connect. How do we go out there and get the traffic where people are already hanging out and get them to come start consuming our message, get on our email list and purchase our products and services. So if people, I, I want you to all realize folks, and again, the more engaged you are, the more you catch our attention, the more we're going to give away one of these copies. And if, if you're not the one who wins, go get yourself a few copies. In fact, Tanisha bought three and she passed one on to her husband. But if you take out one of these steps, for example, create, compile, and connect, but you never have capture. Whoa, let's talk about that. Skipping one of the four. What happens, you and I both know people who do this, yeah. this, and this, but not this. What happens? So I'll give you a, a real live example. You remember a couple years ago, it's been a few years now, when Facebook changed their algorithm. Oh, it yeah. used to be you had a Facebook page and you made a post everybody saw your yes. post. And it was like the glory days. I'll never forget a lady reached out to me right after right after uh, Facebook made the changes and it was like 15% were seeing your post. Yep. And she's like, my business has dried up overnight. I had 30,000 Facebook fan followers, um, fan page followers, and now they're not seeing the post. I don't know what to do. What did I do wrong? That's number one. Number two, I actually talk about in the book, remember Vine? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's something everybody forgets about, but I actually wrote about this in the book uh, on the capture because I thought it was so powerful and so important. And uh, basically what I talked about was how that dried up for what was known as Viners at the time. I remember Their that. business completely dried up. It was actually an, uh, a whole article on Entrepreneur dot com that talked about it and i remember uh, gary gary v was like oh yeah 
Vine is going to go, you know, so big, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you put all your chips on any one platform, right? There was even a group of Viners, popular Viners, who were out filming a documentary when they heard and got the word that Twitter had was going to kill the Vine platform. And the people who had followers on Vine, unless they just also had followers on YouTube, everything dried up overnight. And so having an email list is traffic you own and traffic you control. Yes. That is the key if you're going to have an online business. So true. So true. And I'll tell you what, I'll argue with people that everyone's business is an online business. It is now, right? isn't it? <laughs> right? I mean, I get I get what you're saying. Like some of us are only online business, but even brick and mortar, yeah. It's like with COVID, mm-hmm. you you just blew up if you didn't have uh, you know, I was in Tennessee the other day and I was at a um baking cooking store not because i wanted to be there but my wife was there and i was supporting her and uh you know different sauces barbecue jams all this stuff and i go up to the lady and i say you know just talking small talk i said how has COVID affected your store and she looked at me and she said if we didn't have our online sales we would have gone under wow. but but the fact that we had a shutdown and immediately put all the products online or were already online, actually, people just diverted their attention and said, I'll just go buy online. But but what you're saying, Jonathan, is true. Like Facebook ads, Facebook ads shifted for our business. And luckily, providentially, we pivoted. Uh, but there's a lot of people who, you know, you get shut down or banned from a certain platform, you're done. So how do we protect ourselves, Jonathan, with this world we live in today? Well, I think it is. it just goes back to that email list. Until something else comes along, that is the thing that, like, you own. In fact, mm-hmm. even for me, I, you know, even though I use a, an email marketing software, we regularly download our entire CSV file um, because you never know. You know, I, I know certain other platforms, not the one that I'm on, have actually also like pretty much hijacked or said you violated our terms of agreements because you sent out an affiliate link. And so we have um, shut down your account. And the blogger friend that I knew, he had no way of actually getting to his email list. So at the end of the day, it's about that email list because yeah. if your website goes down, if your Facebook page goes, you know, you get banned from Facebook. If you, you know, whatever it is, and we see a lot of that happening today with cancel culture, with, with that happening, you can send an email out and say, hey, you can find me over here now. Mm. This is where I am. So that is, uh, I think to me, that is what's going to to isolate you. Uh, I had a friend, a mentor who told me early on, and this was the best advice I ever received. He said, Jonathan, there's only two things you can take with you to the grave with your business. Number one, it's your reputation, how you treat people. And number two, it's your email list. And that was the just most sound advice that I needed to hear uh, early on. Wow. Folks, I'm loving this. People are saying, you know, like they're 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 echoing. Uh, Leah from Texas, I believe. Leah, are you from Texas? I think you are. Leah is a, a great author. Um, I I she sent me her book. In fact, you sent me a pen that I use often, almost every morning. Leah, so thank you. But these these uh, these amazing people here. Um, they need to learn these lessons. I need to learn these lessons. What else, Jonathan? I know that you have another part there. Live your message. It's kind of like the final part of the book. What's in that section? And by the way, folks, get this book. I mean, this is amazing. Jonathan fits our core values. He fits the serving, not selling. 
he fits everything that we stand for. That's why I brought him on. No problem. But what what's part four about? So part four, and actually, I appreciate you. You gave me permission to tell your story because I thought yeah. this was so important. It's about living your message. So how do you live it each and every day? You know, times get tough. Business goes up, it goes down. Our emotions go up and down. We got started. We're doing the marketing. But how are we showing up every single day to our audience? And uh, the parts that I uh, love is I really talk about three important things. And that is encouraging hearts, educating heads, and empowering hands. So it mm. really goes back to the heart, the head, and the hands. That's so good. encouraging hearts. It doesn't matter what, what industry or niche you're in. If you're dealing with people, you're dealing with potential discouragement or a need of hope. And if you're a person, especially in the last year, it doesn't matter if you're a restaurant. If you could provide hope to people in some way, they're drawn to that. People are drawn to hope. And I talk about in the book why um, uh, the Lord of the Rings would have never happened if it wasn't for C.S. Lewis. Oh, yeah, I remember that part. I remember that part. And, and it's like incredible. Yeah. yeah, it's incredible that that J.R.R. Tolkien sent a letter to the Tolkien Society after C.S. Lewis died and said, if it were not for the persistent encouragement from C.S. Lewis, the Lord of the Rings would have never happened. Whew. That's the power of encouragement. And so we're called to encourage. But then it's educating heads. And, you know, we need to have value in what we bring. Give people the tools. Help them to take steps forward. And then the last one is about empowering hands. What can we do to help people move from delay to action and actually get them to take action? That's so that's so where we wrap up the book. All right. We're going to pick a, a winner here for the book. And uh, let me check my my Slack here. And we are going to pick uh, Leah. So Leah, who who uh, has been very active multiple times here. Yeah, big congrats to her. If you didn't get the book, you can get the book. Um, like I mentioned, we're going to provide a link here. And we're dropping the Amazon links, but you can tell. I mean, this book has been out not that long. It already has 57 reviews, and people are digging it. And, uh, I mean, Amazon has, is really behind this. But what a great, great book. What What's your vision? I, I know you have one of these big visions, uh, different than mine, but I have a big vision, and, and I've read it before. In fact, I think I have it memorized, but don't. Don't quote me in case I get it wrong. What's what's don't you have a big vision? Is it like a thousand or ten thousand or something uh, to get those many bloggers uh, full time or something? Yep. Tell me about you that. Got it. So we're working aggressively at that by 2025. We want to literally help, and just like we were sharing some stories earlier, we want a thousand people to go from just stepping into the game, believing their message matters, over to doing this full time with their, their writing or podcasting um, or they're doing videos or live streaming. Mm -hmm. We want to help them, give them the tools to build their audience around that message they have. That's really the, the heart of what we do is the audience building piece yes. of it. And uh, it's, it's a challenge. It's, it's what we love those challenges is helping them get in the trenches, build the list, build the traffic mm -hmm. so that they can uh, mm -hmm. get their message heard. And so, um, kind of our core internal thing that we talk about on our team is every messenger deserves to have their message heard. And Ooh, that's, that's what we're good. passionate about. That's good. Hey, last question for you. Why? Because I know, I know the answer, but I don't know if the people know the answer. Why? What shifts when people can go full-time with their passion? In other words, this is your story. This is my story. This is a lot of our Chad, you know, Chad Allen story. This is a lot of the people we run with. They see us now and they're like, oh, that's easy for you. But those years where a lot of people right now are right where we were, mm. what changes when you can do it full time? Um, yeah. Why is that a better thing? The first thing is you get your life back for a lot of people. Uh, I remember Chad, one of his first weeks of being full-time with his business online. He sent me a text and he said, 
uh, I just walked into the kitchen and it was three o'clock and I told my wife, I think I'm done working today. And it's like, there's nobody saying you got to sit here at this desk till 5 p.m. If um, And that was what was important for me. You know, I never missed a basketball game for my son. I never missed a volleyball game. I traveled to Orlando several times to attend volleyball tournaments in the middle of the week. The only dad in the stands cheering their their daughter on, which, you know, I, and nothing against those other dads. It's just making and choosing a different yes. path. And so I'd say the big thing is you get your life back. And, um, you know, for me, money doesn't just buy things. It buys time. It's time for me to spend time with my, my family, time to be available to do whatever God wants me to do. And just having that time freedom, that's like the big one for me. That's so good. I love it. Well, where can people find out more about you? Uh, where is your book found? I mean, obviously I showed it on Amazon. Give us some, uh, some next steps here. Yeah. So we're at marketyourmessage.com where we do a lot of our, um, teaching about how to build that audience. And, uh, also we have a, a site for our book called, uh, your message matters book.com. And, uh, currently we're giving free copies for people in the U S uh, just pay for shipping to grab a free copy. And, but you can also get it at the bookstore can get it uh on amazon so it's however you want to get it go get it and the audio is coming soon but like yes. most books i i digest them in multiple versions and formats so jonathan this was fantastic and like i said your uh your teaching over the years has been just outstanding i love the reputation comment you made because there's a lot of people in the business that that they don't care they do play the short game, but you're one of these people who is playing the long game. And uh, I think God's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. So thanks for being here today, my friend. Thank you for having me. And Carrie, I just appreciate everything you're doing for others and uh, the, the awesome reputation you have, because we have a lot of people that interact with both of us and they have nothing but good things to say about you and your team and what you're doing for people. So I appreciate what you're doing to serve others. Thank you so much, my friend. You uh, make it a great day and uh, you, Chad, and I will have to get together here soon. Yeah, it'd be fun. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.